I would like everyone to take one minute to look around you. See how many faces there are here and how many different nationalities that there are here. It's not just Pakistani. There are some from India. India? It's India? Of course it's India. Pakistan? There is Pakistan? All part of Hind. Same. Some from Turkey. We have from Greece. We have from Malaysia. We have from Europe, from Bosnia, from Albania. This is what Holy Prophet ﷺ came to bring. People together. Different nationalities that they can come together and they can worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not an easy thing to do. You know it is not an easy thing to do. You know how difficult it is sometimes in your own communities or in your own families with your own people. Now to gather people who are completely different from one another and to gather people who for hundreds, maybe thousands of years, they were enemies to each other and because of the love of the Prophet ﷺ, the enemies are able to sit next to each other and to worship. That is a big miracle of the Holy Prophet ﷺ that is only granted to the Nabi of the Ahir Zaman. Earlier Prophets, only to their communities, not universal. And if we look at the different times in Islam, Islam from the time of the Holy Prophet ﷺ is 1,000, give or take 400, almost 500 years, 1,400 years. 1500 years, let's say, round figure. And in that 1500 years' time, beginning with the Khulafai Rashidin, to the dynasties of the Umayyad and the Abbasis, then for over 600 years, the Ottoman dynasty and the Ottoman Empire that ruled from Istanbul. We see now that Islam spread from east to west and north to south. And people from all different nationalities, they come together to worship. But the secret is, each nationality, they maintain their own identity and their own secrets that Allah has given for them. It is not to make everyone to become Pakistani, or everyone to become Chinese, or everyone to become Turkish. Because that is a sunnah of the Rasulullah wasalam, too, to maintain everyone's individual secrets that Allah has given. And that a secret of ruling the whole world which Islam did for over 1400 years, that we were a superpower for over 1400 years. Why is that? How did it happen? especially the last 600 years, 700 years, under the Ottomans, that they went all the way into the heart of Europe, half of Europe became Muslim. Hmm? They went all the way to the steppes of Russia. Their empire was the biggest empire the world has ever known. Don't think, don't say Genghis Khan is a bigger or Alexander is a bigger, no. It's so easy now for people to come and just to destroy everything. But what did they leave? Did they administer? Did they bring people together? Did they take care of them? Did they bring their civilization high? Did they say, keep your secret? You don't even have to know my language. Huh? Did they do that? No. Other colonies, other empires, they did. That is a tool of colonization. But in Islam, it is not. Everyone knows Arabic. Of course, we have to learn it. But you don't see now a Muslim from Somalia Muslim from Egypt, Muslim from China, Muslim from Hind, that they are the same. They have all different identities and they have different secrets that is given to them. And they were able to maintain it, but still they were holding on to Islam properly. That is given to them. But it is only because of their love to the Holy Prophet ﷺ that they're carrying strictly the sunnah of the Prophet. 
one of the biggest sunnats of the Prophet ﷺ is giving salawats to him. You say, how can Prophet give salawat to himself? No. Prophet ﷺ, yes, he never prays himself. But in a hadith sharif from Sahih Buhari, he also says, I am of the best creation that Allah has created. I'm not saying this out of arrogance or pride. I'm stating a fact. The love of Habibullah wasalam, and he's saying in another Sahih Hadith, if you don't love me more than you love yourself, more than you love everything, more than you love your family or everything that you own, if you don't love me more than that, you have not come to what? Complete faith. Now, we're looking. What is complete faith? To love the Holy Prophet, wasalam. Who are our role models now to show that love? Because so many people can say we love the Prophet, but they're, according, they're doing it according to their own understanding maybe. No? Alhamdulillah, we're all here, Ahli Sunnah. Alhamdulillah, we're all here Muslims. But, if we are here with our own understanding about Islam, or about the Holy Prophet, والسلام, and we're not following the role models that were there for 1400 years, we'd just be following our own ego. First role model, Prophet. Second, the Sahabi Kiram. Now the Sahabi Kiram, they love Holy Prophet so much, والسلام, And when they say, Ya Rasulullah, والسلام, may my parents be sacrificed for you. You think they're just saying that? They said, may my children be sacrificed for you. And they did. They sacrificed their children, and they sacrificed their parents. They sacrificed everything for the love of that Prophet ﷺ. Now, some Muslims are nervous when they hear this. Why you should be nervous? If Allah is loving that one, why are we nervous? We may say we are weak. We may not be able to do that. Of course we are. But can we say that that idea, that that belief, I don't want to use the word concept, it's not a concept, it's a reality. Can we say that that is false? No, it is true. It is haq. Because Allah is saying in the Qur'an al-Kareem, Eusbillah ni shaytan rajim, bismillah rahman rahim, inna Allah al-malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya yuhal ladhina amanu. It continues, yes. You know the ayat, so many know the ayat. Praise him as much as you want to praise him, O you who believe. Now this is what separates the Muslims from the believers. This praising of the Prophet ﷺ has been ongoing. Yes, it has been ongoing from the time of the Prophet until 1400 years. Did the Sahabi Kiram praise the Prophet? Yes, they did. The aunt of the Prophet, Atika, she wrote poetry about the Prophet. Do we know this? We should know. Hassan ibn Sabit was the Prophet's poet. He used to write poetry. He used to praise him. There were so many Sahabis looking at the Prophet and saying, Ya Prophet, wasalam, you are so beautiful. May I write? May I praise you? He says, praise. He started laughing. Praise. Because all praises to him, he directed to who? To Allah. Have we ever seen any of the Sahabis, they praise Prophet so much that they end up worshipping him? That's why they are saying, Holy Prophet is saying, Oh my Sahabis, if you see the Muslims of the Ahir Zaman, you're going to call them unbelievers. And if they see you, they're going to say that you are crazy. Because they were crazy. In love with the Holy Prophet ﷺ. When he cuts his hair, any small piece that, run, that falls to the ground, they rush to collect it. Mubarak hair. We're wearing the Nali Sharif. This Nali Sharif is representing his shoe. Why is that? You think we have fun just wearing things? There is no reason. We are Muslims. We don't make bidat. 
Why is that? Because when Holy Prophet والسلام, he went to the Miraj, he wanted to take off his shoes, didn't he? Where? On the Arsh, in Divine Presence. What did Allah tell him? Don't take off your shoes, O my beloved one. The Arsh, the throne of Allah, it will be blessed by your sandals. Different from Musa alayhi salam. When he was speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the bush, through the tree. And Allah is saying to Musa alayhi salam, Kalimullah, you are entering into sacred territory, remove your shoes. But Allah himself saying, my arsh, my throne will be blessed if you step on it with your shoes. So many believers from that time until now saying, may we be dust under his feet. Hazrat Rumi, Karasullah Sir is saying, the number one poet in America, that so many Americans, they are running after him to say, this is nice, this is Sufism. Singing and dancing, their understanding of Sufism is different, is wrong, is not singing and dancing. But that's Western. It's okay to a point. Maybe it's an entry point for them to understand. Later, now you have to carry both. The spirituality and the shariat. With both wings, then you can fly. With only one wing, you're just going to be circling around and around and around. Because you only have one wing, you cannot take off. You're going to start getting dizzy. You start seeing things you think that is real, but it is not. You're just imagining it. Hazrat Rumi is saying what? That so many Muslims... So many, uh, calling themselves Sufis, so many non-Muslims also calling themselves Sufis, saying, no, 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 Sufism has nothing to do with Shariat. It's all about love. Nothing to do about what we have to do five times, but you're still at the low level. That is wrong. Because what did Hazrat Rumi said? May I be dust under the feet of Mustafa. And if anyone tells, says that I am leaving him and his teachings, that I'm not from his community, may those ones have the anger of Allah and to know that I'm removed from them and that they are removed from me. Azrat Rumi. Now, from the time of 1400 years until the Islamic Empire fell, the Mawlid al-Nabi was made into a very important day for people who believe. From the time of the Prophet until then, people have been glorifying Prophet, praising him, which is what we do, which is what is called Mawlid. Did Sahabi Kiram did that? Yes, they did. Do they do it exactly in the same way that we're doing it? No. We're not living exactly the way that they are living either, are we? No, we're not. So many things strictly like that, they may say that we're committing bidat, isn't it? Even the Quran Karim, if you want to interpret it strictly, it is a bidat. How am I saying this? Quran is a bidat. Was the Quran compiled into a mushaf during the time of the Sahabi Kiram, during the time of the Prophet? No, it was not. It was committed to memory. Even Hazrat Abu Bakr, when they told him to compile it, he says, I will not. Prophet never did it. Iqra. The first command was to recite. And everyone remembered, memorized. To be able to recite. But when so many other wars happened right after Prophet's passing, during the time of Hazrat Umar, so much other confusions happened. When the Hufaz, they started passing, they started going to the next world. And Hazrat Umar, then after that, Hazrat Usman, they're watching it and they say, now we have to compile the Quran into one Mus'haf. Everyone is still remembering it. They're still memorizing up till today. And there's another big miracle that is given only to Islam, not to other religions. You ever hear a Christian saying, I memorized the Gospels? Never. You ever hear a Jew saying, I memorized the Torah to Sharif? 
They don't have the Tarat al Sharif anyway. They have a version of it. Never. But the miracle of Islam, the miracle of the Holy Prophet, والسلام, that Allah has given to this nation is that from seven years old to 70 years old, you find them, if not in the tens of thousands, in the hundreds of thousands, if not more, they are Hufas. Islam and the Quran has been memorized by people of every nation and is still kept there. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. How Allah is blessing us with that. We will never fall into the way of the earlier nations, of the Jews and the Christians. So, Sahabi Kiram, after that, the Salaf is Salihin, after that, the Tabi'in, 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 continuing from that time until now, they did celebrate. Not exactly the way that we are doing it, but the spirit is what? To gather together, to remember Holy Prophet, والسلام, to speak about his life, to show our love for him, to recite salawats for him, to give candy to children, to cook and to feed each other. Any one of these things that we are doing, it is haram. Who can say it is haram? Is it haram to cook food to give to each other to eat? It is not only halal, it is encouraged. It is a sunnah. But I hear sometimes, I'm checking here and there, somebody was asking some big, calling himself a sheikh, saying, oh sheikh, they asked me, the sheikh is saying, they asked me a question. Can you celebrate the maulid? Can you celebrate the maulid by giving candy to children? Can you celebrate the Maulid by cooking food and giving it to people? Can you celebrate the Milad by reciting Quran? Can you celebrate the Milad by speaking about the Sirah of the Nabi wasalam? He said, oh my brothers, no. This is all forbidden. Because it never happened. This is all bidat. Does that make sense? I believe everyone here is a professional. Does that make sense? No, speak freely. If you say it doesn't make sense, or you say it does make sense that all these things that we are doing, that people are doing in the Mawlut, in the Mevlut, in the Milat, it is forbidden in Islam. Say, you cannot. Are there groups of people who maybe take the Milat and they go to an extreme and they do kind of foolish things? Of course they do. Are there people in the masjids that they don't know how to pray or insisting that their way is right and they do foolish things? Of course they are. Are there Muslims who do foolish things? Of course they are. Should we then ban prayer? Because some people do foolish things? No. Then we're falling into the same category that those who are saying, Oh, you're a Muslim? You must be a terrorist. Don't fall into the same kind of logic. This is not logic. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gathering us here tonight. To remember our Holy Prophet والسلام, and to give praises for him. For those who believe, understand, our awliya, the friends of Allah, the beloved ones to Allah, they are saying, there is nothing that man can do to imitate Allah. Can they? No. But there is one action that you can do to imitate Allah. And that is giving the salawats. Because Allah and His angels giving salawat, O you who believe, send blessings on Him. So we're saying, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam. Inshallah Rahman, that is our mission and that is our purpose. Some they are saying, well, it's going to lead to shirk, celebrating the maulud. Do you know what shirk is? What is shirk? Attributing a partner to Allah, isn't it? Saying that there's not one Allah, there are two Allahs. If anyone was going to commit a shirk by loving Prophet so much, it would be the Sahabi Kiram. 
nobody here or any time in history from that time until now can say that we love Prophet or we understand him more than the Sahabi Kiram. Did they ever do that? Never. In fact, for 1400 years, never you'll find a group of people who are praising Prophet so much that they say, Hasha Astaghfirullah, that you are our creator. Never. And that is another miracle of the Prophet. Earlier nations, they deviate. The Christians, they deviate. They are praising him so much that they've deviated. Have Muslims praised him so much in 1400 years that they've deviated? Never. It has happened. So, what is the blessings that's coming with the Mawlid Sharif? I believe almost all of you here belonging to the Hanafi Mashab. The Imams of the Great Mashab that is holding on strictly to the teachings of the Prophet they've described in detail the merits and the blessings of attending and celebrating the Mawlid Sharif. We are celebrating it with what? Speaking. Speaking about what? And praising the Holy Prophet. After that, what are we doing? We are feeding people. After we are feeding people, what do we do? We are giving the salawats. Now, Alhamdulillah, this opportunity has come to us. And in these days, you will find so much confusion everywhere. It's okay, we leave that confusion because we are sure of our faith. At the same time, if anyone is confused and if they're really sincere with their confusion, they're going to find a way to ask and to clarify. Isn't it? If you are not wanting to clarify that confusion, then that means that you've already judged and you've made up your mind. So, you're not in confusion, you're making confusion. Maybe we may not understand, definitely, that's okay. Do you seek to understand or do you seek to condemn or judge? We have proofs, not only of the four great Imams of the Mezhabs, but hundreds and thousands of scholars and awliyas, salihin, to say that they honor the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Lahab, the uncle of the Prophet There's a surah about him. He is the father of the flames. Hmm? Abu Lahab. When Prophet was born, he was so overjoyed. He has a nephew. That the one who brought news to say that, oh, Ya Abu Lahab, now you have a nephew. What did he do? He released her. He celebrated. Different kinds of celebration. Celebrated that birthday. Because of that celebration that he did, he is Abu Lahab, father of the flames. That ayat is saying he's going to be in hellfire forever, isn't it? But because of that one action, what did he do? Did he celebrate? Yes. He felt happy and he showed it. He freed a slave in which there are so many hadiths saying that if you feed people, the sawab that you get is as if you're freeing slaves. Where is our knowledge these days? That's basic knowledge. So many, they're not even knowing. We must know. Because of that one action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed him from the hellfire on every Monday. The Prophet was born on a Monday. Every Monday, Abu Lahab, he was taken out from hellfire. He had reprieve. He has relief and safety. He was a fierce enemy. All his life he dedicated to bring Holy Prophet down. But one action that he did, one action that he did sincerely, he was blessed. Allah Allah. Those who believe, Evli Allah, they are saying, even if you celebrate the birthday of the Prophet 
every month, every week, or every day, every moment, it is still nothing. Why is that nothing? Because Allah and His angels praise that Prophet. You think we can ever match the praising of Allah and His Prophet? That we can ever match the praisings of Allah and His angels? Allah and His angels praising, and there's no time limit to that too. You think Allah said it one time? Or is it from pre-eternity up till post-eternity? Alhamdulillah. The Mawlid Sharif, like what we said before, brings so many people together. And they're bonded by what? Love of the Prophet ﷺ. And the love of the Prophet ﷺ will bring us to the love of Allah. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Those who are cutting off the love of the Prophet, saying that he's just a messenger. Allah is important. Of course, Allah is most important. He's just a messenger. Don't pay too much attention to him. We must pay attention to Allah. Otherwise, we're going to end up worshipping him. Shaitan said the same. Allah is saying to all the angels and also to Azazil. That time he wasn't Shaitan. He was Azazil. Saying to what? Make sajda to Adam. Shaitan says, no, that is shirk. I make sajda only to you. You are Allah. I'm better than him anyway. Looking at Adam alayhi salam, but looking at the form made from mud. But Prophet is saying, I was a prophet when Adam alayhi salam was between water and clay. He was already a prophet. Because of that action, that's, shaitan is saying, no, I'm not going to be, make sajda to this one. I make sajda only to you. He is just mud. That means shaitan is not understanding what is inside that form. It, what is the spirit that is inside that form? What is that spirit Adam salam was carrying all of us? Adam salam was carrying the seeds of all of humanity. And Adam salam was carrying the lights of all the prophets. And he was carrying the light of the holy prophet salam. And that Maqam al-Mahmud that Allah has created is only for the Holy Prophet And that he had created man, you and me, to be his Khalifa. Allah has created us to represent him. So, those who are afraid that this may happen, that we end up worshipping him, don't be afraid. It has never happened. But those who are saying we have to put Allah first before Prophet, of course we have to put Allah first before Prophet. We have no argument with that. But Allah is saying to come to me, you have to go through the Prophet. Isn't that why our shahadat is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah? If you cut the Muhammad Rasulullah, are you? From his nation? No, you're not. And Allah in the Hadith Sharif, in the Hadith Qudsi, is saying, Laulaka, Laulaka. If it were not for you, if it were not for you, I would not have created the universes. We may enter into other things, but only if your heart and your minds and your ears and your spirit is ready to understand a little bit. From the reality of the Prophet ﷺ, how the world was created. Inshallah Rahman. May we be worthy to be called belonging to his nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Obey Allah, obey his Prophet. And obey your rightly guided leaders. For those who are saying, no, we place too much importance. You cannot put Allah and Muhammad there, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's shirk. That's putting it together. Allah is saying, obey Allah. Obey his prophet and obey your rightly guided leaders. Then Allah is making shirk. Astaghfirullah. Then it's enough. Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just say obey Allah? 
But he's saying obey Allah is not enough. Obey the Prophet and obey your rightly guided leaders. And in another ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Say to them, Ya Muhammad wasalam, addressing to his Prophet, If you love Allah, you must obey me and follow me for Allah to love you. Qur'an Karim did not come to us individually. It came to the Holy Prophet This is the divine protocol. Allah is saying, to my love is the door through the Holy Prophet Are we ever stuck at the Prophet? No. You ever stuck at the door? You'll be foolish if you stuck at the door. You may enter. But if you don't go through that door, you may not enter. Astaghfirullah alazim wa We're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for all our shortcomings. We don't know anything. We are not uh, claiming anything. But one thing we may say with our kind of uh, deficient worship, that Holy Prophet والسلام, may he be on top of our heads and may our lives and may our children's lives and our parents' life and everything be sacrificed for him. Do not test us, Ya Rabbi, with that. But at least to make that belief, the blessings will come, inshallah, Rahman. Ramina Allahu Tawfiq Al Fatiha.